There are many tools out there to create materials for 3D objects. Material Maker is one of them. It is open source and it's free use for everybody, unless you decide to donate something. So there's absolutely no reason to not take a look at it. Hello and welcome here on Random Rotation. I hope you're all doing well. Let's be honest, the market for material creation tools is already pretty saturated. We have the Substance family, for instance, Marmoset Set Toolbag, Armor Paint, or one could simply use the shading functions of his or her 3D modeling tool of choice. In my case, that would be Blender. Still, I'm super curious what Material Maker can do. And little curiosity never hurts, right? So let's jump right in. MaterialMaker.org is the place where you can read more about the software and download it if you want to give it a shot. Find the link down in the description. Once you download it and unpacked it, you don't need to install anything. Just double click this icon and off you go. And here you can see that Material Maker is based on Godot. First things first, I'm 100% a dark mode guy. And luckily, there is a preset for that. Whew. <laughs> Better. Okay, what do we see? Here on the left, we have the library with all the different nodes. Below that, some preview windows, a histogram, and a reference window. Here you can drag in a reference image and pick up some of the colors from the image and then simply drag those over here. Pretty cool. And we can also drag these windows around to customize our workspace if we like. Or we can completely hide them under View, Panels. There they are. On the right, we have the hierarchy that I won't go over in this short tutorial. Just be aware there is one. And here in the middle, the main window, we can build up our node trees. It is possible to zoom out or into our node trees and that middle button here resets the view. We can work with a grid if necessary and we can change the grid size and this button turns the minimap on the bottom that we can use to maneuver around on and off. We also have preview options in this main window that can be activated with these two buttons here, but I honestly find that a little bit distracting, so I tend to not turn it on. What I do instead is I leave my 2D preview open here on the left and I drag the preview 3D window down here in the lower right corner. That way I have them both open at the same time. That's how I like it. By the way, in the preview windows, we can zoom in and out with the scroll wheel. And in the 3D window, we can change the mesh type from a cube to a cylinder, a sphere, a prism or a plane, or we can load in our own OBJ objects, which is super nice. And the environment can also be changed. By default, this forest one is selected. If you want to change that, go to Tools, Environment Editor, and here you can change whatever you like. But I think it's fine for now. What's really cool is that Material Maker already comes with a bunch of example files that we only need to drag into this window to open and use them. Studying such node trees is not a bad way to learn how the system works. And if that's not enough, we can connect the app to the Material Maker website with this button here. And now we can browse through tons of materials that can be downloaded and used as well. That alone is very useful and pretty awesome if you ask me. 
Now let's create a simple material from scratch. But before we do that, it's a very smart idea to save the project first. This is an open source project that's being maintained by only one person, if I'm not mistaken, which is crazy if you ask me. And yes, it crashes sometimes. So before you do anything that you do not want to lose, remember to save frequently. So the easiest way to give this cube a different color is to simply click here and change the albedo color. But that's boring, let's be honest. Let me drag in the text node. I type in my RR for random rotation and I bump up the font size to 500. I could also change the font, but for the sake of this tutorial, let's stick with the default. And then I connect this output to the colorize node. Let me change this color to a light blue, let's say. And then I connect this to the albedo input of the static PBR node. Nice. If I don't like it this way around, I can now swap the colors like so. And now I want to change the positioning of my text. That can be done either on the node itself with the X and Y values or the way I prefer to do it here in the preview 2D window. I can just drag it around till I'm happy. Right now there is no depth here. Let's change that. I drag out a second connection and put it into a normal map node. And that goes into the normal input here. Can you see the difference? Let's make this text even bigger. Maybe 1000. Yes. I drag out a third connection and plug it into an occlusion node. Connect that. You guessed it, to ambient occlusion. And I think I can bump this value up a bit, like so. So this is a super basic, not even good looking material now. But let's say I'm ready to export it. File, export material. And here I can choose between Blender, Godot, Unity and the Unreal Engine. Not bad. Now, this is all fine and dandy, but let me delete it for now, because what we can also do is to work with texture images instead, which is pretty neat. Let me quickly drag in the diffusion and the normal texture and connect them with the static PBR. And here we go. Now, there's one last thing I want to show you real quick, and that is the paint mode. I go to File, New Paint Project. Then I select Mesh. Let's say this pillow here. Click on Open. I could dial in a higher resolution if necessary, but that's not needed now. And now I click OK again. Boom. Now we are in a paint project. Let's just quickly jump from library to brushes. I double click on a brush that I like and then I can start painting on the mesh. I know this whole workspace is worth a tutorial on its own and we already talked about a lot. I just wanted to show you that this painting mode exists in Material Maker. All in all, a very, very compelling application that you should definitely give a try if you're on the lookout for a decent material creation tool. And that, my friends, is it for this week. I really hope you liked it. And if so, thank you very much. I see you in the next video. And until then, stay safe and motivated. Bye for now.